Um, we'll turn it over to uh, John Werner with our first question of the day. Okay, uh, Dave, can you hear me? I got you. Okay, great. Uh, I guess first thing, uh, how have the uh, meetings been going, the virtual meetings between the uh, players and the coaches? Is everything going pretty smoothly? It has. The longer that we've been in this situation, working virtually like we have, the more it's been um, the health and wellness of our players, the more the talks have revolved around um, uh, getting to know their situation and uh, getting to know their concerns and their feelings. Um, there's, there's also been a fair amount of connecting with parents. Um, it, is, it is filtered away from heavy, heavy football. I think initially the thought was when we broke off like this that we would be in, a, uh, um, in football soon. And, you know, I look back at those times, it's, it's, it's um, it, uh, probably kind of a shame to admit that, but it, it, back at that point, I felt that at some point we'd be back in football. And so we were very heavy into the schematic part of it. The longer it's been, the more we've kind of held that back. Um, I think we've gone through the install period three times. So our players during this process have been the install cycle three different times, whether it's winter, um, spring, and then quarantine time, I guess. And so um, we're about to start the fourth cycle of it here coming up this next week. And so I think along with that, kind of concentrating on specific situations. So football installs as it relates to two minutes um, to uh, backed up situations, maybe four minute situations, um, football installs as it relates to um, um, third down specific situations. So kind of uh, highlighting it that way and then uh, still building on um, us getting to know our players better. All right, next we'll go to uh, Matt Mosley, ESPN Central Texas. Dave, what is the uh, timetable you, you find yourself working with the most? I've seen college presidents and ADs say June 1st, players back on campus. When you start kind of, I know you can't know for certain, but when you start putting these timetables together, are you looking at June 15th? Do you have an August 1st? And do you have different plans that are attached to all those different contingency plans? We do. I think, you know, whether it's, um, it's, it's a June um, it's a, it's a June start, which I don't, I don't think is going to happen. Um, or it's a July start, which I think is a, probably a little bit more, more fair, but we do have different plans for those as it goes. And I think a lot of that, in, you know, it's a moving target. So the, the, the fact that it's so fluid, I think is challenging from the fact that, you know, what this month is going to be um, has a lot to do with what the next month is, and so when you're figuring that out on the run, you know there's there's a you know a right turn that that has to be made. Um, you got to hit the brakes and make a left, and so there's some of that which I think is natural around this time. But uh, we're anticipating a little bit later date. I think a lot of that's still up in the air. You know, I apologize to keep you guys waiting. Um, I was in Big 12 call where just that was being talked about. And so um, there isn't really a, a firm idea, you know, and so I think all that's, that's being worked out as we speak. And so um, having plans for both is the best case, and that's where we're at right now. And next we'll go to David Smoke. Dave, uh, thanks for your time today. If you would have known this was going to happen, would you have taken this your first head coaching job? Yes, yes, yes. I, you know, it's it's given it's given me the opportunity to know our coaches better. I really feel that, and our players probably better as people. You know, the thing that you don't get is how we respond on the grass, which is in a lot of ways, probably the most important thing uh, in terms of knowing your team and knowing who you, who you have, both 
as as teachers and coaches and as uh, as athletes. And so, you know, on the off the grass though, the ability to really connect and um, to kind of get to know what makes people tick and stuff. I really feel we put a lot of work into that, and I feel like uh, that's going to pay off um, here at the end. You know, we were talking, you know, just the other day about, um, you know, we're meeting with our players, and they are uh, finishing our sentences when we're talking about, hey, on this play, if it's this look, you know, our players can, can – they know that, and they're finishing it for – a new group with new offense and new defense that is rare. And so like the ability for them to take that to the field is everything. And so that's, you know, that last final piece, but I think, um, you know, that's thematic knowledge that they have. I think we also have just the knowledge of each other and, and how people respond and what they value and, and how to address them and how to push them. I think those things are there as well. And so, it's going to make for an interesting uh, time when we get back because we're going to know each other so well. I feel um, I can't wait, but I guess to answer your question, it, it has benefited us. There's positive things to it though. You sure miss being out on the field together. Smokey with a follow up, I think. I do. Okay. The, um, is this the most difficult thing you could ever imagine as, as in college football has ever faced? You know, I think it, the moving target is, is hard. And I think the fact that there's, um, there's conferences that are trying to work out details um, that uh, are, are uh, wide ranging and, um, and fluid, I think, is difficult when there's not a um, an overall. Um, this is what we're doing, and so I feel like that part, just being in those discussions, you know, I have so much respect for our commissioner um, um, and our Big Twelve uh, fellow head coaches. You know, the the talk there is so uh, is so forthright and honest, and you really, I feel, it's for the best. Of college football, I, there's tendencies, I imagine, to um, be talking about, hey, this is the best for my particular team or my particular school. And I don't feel that in these talks. And um, as we're trying to kind of navigate kind of what's what, it's, um, you know, we're doing that on our own kind of one eye to what this league is doing or what, what one eye to what that league is doing. So that part is difficult. I think the, um, the communication with our players and the communication with our coaches in terms of staying on the same page as a new staff, I think there's some difficulty to it. I think when you step into that though, there's a lot you can get out of it. Um, and so I feel, you know, we're going to be the better for it when all of it's said and done, when we are back together. Next up, uh, Jerry Hill. Hey Dave, how are you? Good. Um, Couple of the grad transfers that came in. Can you talk about those two guys, William Bradley King and Gunnar Royer? And what are you seeing? In terms, you still got hopefully you know three or four months till the season starts. But do you expect any more comings and goings in the in the transfer portal? You know, with Gunnar, we see him addressing a need. Um, he's got um, good experience. He's you know, his, his times are really good in terms of getting the ball back. And he's got good size and agility for making plays down the field when, when needed. And so um, a really good fit for that position for us. And, you know, great, a great person. And just getting to know him, uh, really respect, uh, you, know, where, you know, where he's coming from and, and what he's all about. And I think it's a really good fit. Um, with William, I think he addresses a need for us with a, a kind of a newly created position for us. And um, I think his experience and, and skill set um, are a perfect fit for this position that we've got. And so, uh, you know, he's really looking forward to coming in and competing and 
and um, and show and showing everybody what he can do. And you know, I'm excited for that too. I think you know, um, looking forward, I think any time that we can strengthen the uh, offensive line, the defensive line, I think that's something that we're always going to pay attention to and be alert for. And so I, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to get better in those areas. Thanks Dave. And apparently Mosley has a radio show at three. So I'm going to let him get his second one in real quick before they go in the air. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Dave. Uh, do you have to, when you think about putting these installs and these defensive packages, you and Ron, do you have to, do you think because of the short amount of time, you're going to have to limit, obviously there's a ton of stuff you would like to put in. Are you going to have to go with sort of a limited or reduced package if you're on, let's say, a July 15 or August 1st type start time? Yeah, I think the, the constraint is what you can practice, the limited time to practice. I think so you want to be able to um, not beat yourself when our first game comes around. You want to fully be playing fast, playing confident, and forcing somebody else to beat you. And so I think the ability to master the fundamentals and have a foundation um, defensively and offensively, I think, is, is, is the key there. I think what you miss in spring is you miss you know, there's a foundational time but there also is a, a time, generally the foundational time would be the first maybe two weeks, the first six installs. And once you get past those, in, and you've got 15, 15 practices, you've got 10 installs. So those other four are kind of, hey, I think our team is this. Hey, I think our team is that. Hey, in the winter workout, see how fast that guy was? we got to get him involved. Or, hey, these first couple practices, you see this? We have to be able to create some for that. So we don't have that time. And so, um, to me, you lose that. And as opposed to to try to make make it making it up in a short amount amount of time, let's focus on the stuff that we know, get good at it, and then build it as we go get into the season, and take it from there. And so, uh, that's a good question. And I think it does change how you approach. On that defense, do you have more depth? Do you feel like? In the secondary, looking at some of those guys, you've got some uh, obviously talented safeties and quarterbacks that are coming back. I guess, in a sense, you can kind of build around that a little bit. Would, is that an accurate statement? Is that the, the deepest part of your defense yes. right now? Yes, the DBs are. I think we've got some good people returning. I think we've got some good people coming in. I think um, linebacker-wise, we've got to create some depth. I feel really good about um, – the guys that are in in competition for those starting roles, we got to build depth for those roles that are behind them. And then I feel D line wise, we got to practice. We've got, we've got to be able to get some um, some pads popping and guys using hands and going through the up ups and downs of a camp and just build some experience. I think so much ability and so much talent there. I think the ceiling is very high. Uh, the experience um, can be better. Thanks. Next up, uh, Matt Roberts. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking some time with us today. Um, hey. First off, uh, I just kind of, you know, what has this been like trying to move to a new city, move your family from South Louisiana, take care of all of that, and then also, you know, focus on the football side of things? Uh, no, it's been great. I think the, my, my, my family is really excited about this move. I think, you know, I've got the house now uh, here in Waco, so I'm, I have an inflatable mattress. And I've got, you know, the, the pepperoni pieces that are in the freezer. And, and so, like, you know, when I drive up, so I spend the weekends in Baton Rouge with them. And, uh, you know, if like, for example, like for Mother's Day, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in home in Baton Rouge with my family. And then I drive up um, and, try to be able to get as many recruiting calls as possible on that drive. And, you know, our, our department here has done a great job of kind of teeing those up for me. So about every half hour I'm on the phone. Um, so it, it's gotten to where it flies by. But then when I'm up here, it's the, the ability to kind of uh, um, get to work on the plan, like we were talking about earlier, the planning and the contingency planning, about every plan you have. Um, like I say, if you're going left, you need a plan to go right and just about everything you're doing. And so it allows the time to do that up here. So I think 
that's been going on for about three, four weeks. And so I can see that continuing here for a little bit, but um, they've been great. They're really looking forward to coming up and, um, you know, they all want to see their rooms at the house and they all want to run around up here and, and um, kind of embrace, em embrace Waco, embrace Baylor some more. But um, yeah, I feel good about the, the, the gelling of our staff. I think a lot of guys have made the move this past week. And so um, we got more guys here in Waco than we've ever had. And so this is about the time generally that you would see that. So we're kind of right on schedule. And so I think, you know, families are getting situated. People are getting kind of into their grooves. And uh, I feel good about where we're at. And just real quickly, uh, obviously the NFL draft a couple weeks ago, you guys had several players taken. What was that like for you to watch those guys that you coached up and, and kind of watch grow up, you know, go on to the NFL? It was, it, was, um, it was exciting. I think we all were just so hungry to watch some type of sports. And, you know, we're all kind of glued to that. And, uh, you know, just the, the LSU players that I was a part of recruiting, was, it, was, it was fun to see them and see them with their families and remembering, you know, the recruitment and everything. And uh, when Rashard Lawrence got drafted, I talked to Rashard the other day and I told him when he got drafted, I jumped out of my seat. I was so excited for him. I, I thanked him for really a lot of the thankless work that he did in that was his position. And so it was just so cool for him to go and do something like that and then for people to see it and notice it and recognize the player he is and, and – for him to have an opportunity now. I'm just so, I'm so proud of him and excited, and, you know, excited for a lot of our guys. I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of the, um, the, uh, the, the draft selections here at Baylor and uh, told them out, you know, I felt that, you know, some of them I had met, some of them I hadn't. And so just sitting at, um, at home watching the draft and I'm getting texts on when do you think Denzel is going to go or, uh, when, you, when you think so-and-so is going to go. And I go, I don't know. And we're all kind of texting and talking back and forth like we know him. And I told him that. I said, we don't know you, man, but we're all like root for you. And so when when guys were getting drafted, we were way excited. And I, I called him to wish me congratulations, tell him to welcome here anytime. And, um, you know, it, what, a, what, a great, what a great weekend it was. And I'm, I'm so happy and, and uh, proud of all of them. All right, next we'll go to Grayson Grutaper. Hey, Coach. Um, I was just wondering, since, you know, the dead period has kind of extended over and over again uh, as far as recruiting goes, um, how has y'all's kind of mindset changed and evolved, you know, as far as filling out for 2020, but also, you know, moving in the direction for 2021? Have y'all incorporated anything new um, because of it? Yeah, we are um... – I, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to both Vince Ginta and um, our recruiting staff. I think they've done a great job of identifying um, recruits and finding guys that um, that fit our positional needs. Um, we talk about for 21 specifically, we're looking for these many uh, linebackers, these many corners, these many old linemen, you know, this – these many tackles and you know in out of so out of that um, out of that group then here's a board of how guys are ranked and how we look at them they've done a great job of that and keeping in touch with the coaches of uh, kind of how that board looks and the communication and what it's been like and you know it's a it's a brand new world with all of this with a lot of guys being able to be contacted and then you know people not being able to see your campus and so the ability to reach out and um, be available and communicate and talk with parents. All that has been a strength for building the 21 group, I think. Um, so about four or five weeks ago, we started really mixing in more of the 22s of identifying and building that board, watching film, uh, evaluating, working to get offers out, you know, um, communicating with high school coaches, who do you think, who do you see, who's coming up, and who should we be looking at and building that. And so I feel, I feel stronger, um, much stronger about where we're going with our 22s. Um, and it's been a work in progress, but I feel like we're on the right path. 
Okay, coach, quick follow up. Um, I was just also curious, have y'all incorporated any virtual tours or anything like that, which I know kind of has been the new norm now for visits since there aren't any right now? Correct. Yeah, we have, you know, we have that one call um, in during this time in terms of our, our recruiting uh, guidelines. And so, you know, like most people, we've used that, we've used that time for um, like a virtual meet. And so much like we would be um, taking in a laptop into a recruit's home and kind of talking through this, talking through that, we do that off of like a Zoom call. And so um, we'll, we'll be able to highlight our coaches, um, have like a, a, a highlight of what the stadium's like and what the facilities are like and what our, our academic programs and uh, the, the Baylor campus, the city of Waco, to give people uh, an idea of what we can offer and really try to highlight our uh, our strengths. And so I think that that's been going great. You know, we try to get the families to all sit down and, and be a part of it. And, you know, so far, so good. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Next up, Chuck Carlton. Hi, Dave. Hey. Recently on one of these Zoom calls, uh, Tom Herman was talking with us and shared the fact that you guys had discussed, just from a coaching standpoint, how to handle this situation. You know, kind of there is no blueprint, that sort of thing. Just wondering what, what you maybe took away from that. and Have you reached out to any other, you know, coaches or mentors? And what's the best advice that you've been given during this time? Yeah, I think uh, it's a good question. I think a lot of it has been just that communication because nobody really knows. And so it's, um, you know, one thing we were talking about um, is is the June June 1st or June opening or July opening in terms of getting going. And so getting people's opinions, um, trying to get the medical opinions. Um, I think to try to be, it's a race to be educated with, with areas that, um, you know, maybe we haven't we haven't been um, an expert in, and so to to read as much as possible, to talk to people that are on committees. You know, just the other day, I, mean, I talked with Pat Fitzgerald, um, uh, who's who's uh, a chair of I think, I think it's American Football Coaches Association. Um, yeah, I talked with Paul Chris at Wisconsin, uh, Matt Wells. And Tom Herman, and so you try to be able to get as many people as you can, just their opinions, and they're doing it. They're doing it the same way. They're reaching out as well, trying to get a consensus. You know, there isn't something that's been done before in this area. So, before I think guys are making moves, they're kind of calling, seeing what other people are doing before they're making their decision. And we're no different over here. Next, we go to Pernay from the Lariat. Coach, you talked a little bit about how you're not able to see how players fit into the system and stuff like that. In general, how do you think the lack of spring football will affect decisions about the depth chart and potential position values? I could barely hear you. I'm sorry. Could you say it again? So you talked a little bit about how you're not able to see players and how they fit into the system. How do you think the lack of spring football will affect decisions about the depth chart and potential positional battles? Good question. We will start um, kind of with that that winner that winner chart has been, and so that hasn't moved. And generally, there's a fair amount of movement in spring, so we're we're, we're taking that approach of starting from that point, and then going off the merits of the practice from that from there. And I think you know, the ability to have real clear, concise communication that way, but on both sides, I think um, is needed and, and will be there. But I feel like the, the opportunity for guys to compete, um, to make um, great impressions with a lot of times for, or for a lot of them, for coaches that uh, they, haven't, they haven't been, um, they haven't played for before. Um, and guys that are coming in with kind of clear minds on, on on what's possible and what we can do. I think all of that is, is there. And um, I know our guys are excited about that opportunity. I know I am. I, I think the ability to, uh, to make a decision on what this time frame looks like and um, 
you know, between the, the get back to play shape, right, and um, testing and um, um, evaluation time, the camp kind of compete to play, learning schemes time, and getting ready for a game time. Those are the three areas. And so I think, you know, that middle area may be compressed some. And so I think, you know, that just being, again, communicated and being everyone on the same page, we can all collect collectively go and get it. Next up, uh, Kevin Lundquist. Kevin, you're muted. All right, Dave, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, my question was, is because when you guys broke off w with your players about two months ago, you, you obviously couldn't evaluate them during this time. So what are some things that you and your staff are trying to rely on them to maybe communicate to you where they're at, how they're developing on things that they're working on by themselves? There's not a whole lot we can do there. And so that's a, um, you know, I think there's, um, I mean, we cannot ask for um, any really type of feedback or anything from a workout or from a run or any of that. So like, we have workouts for them to do. Um, and so, you know, we'll, when, we, when we talk to them, we'll talk about how their day went um, and they'll address if they, you know, hey, I worked out today, I did this and I did that but we're not able to hold them accountable to anything or, um, or enforce any form of a workout. And so I think all of that with, with I mean, and that's, that's an NCAA rule. And so once we do get them back, then it just becomes that much more important to, like, like we talked about before, evaluate where they're at. You know, so in, in a sense, you know, the, the kid that left here, who, who's the kid that's now here? And how different is he from um, uh, health and wellness, uh, you know, physical strength, physical endurance, and then f evaluating that, assessing it, and putting the time that um, is necessary to build him back up to where um, he can be the best he can moving forward. And so there's a fair amount of time of that's allotted for that on the return. But... Um, yeah, it is unique from um, from that from that um, that thought of um, you know outside of our football installs. Uh, there's kind of like an honor thing we were doing. It, it's kind of like an honor code situation. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then I had a follow up uh, about you. You talked about the newly created position that William Bradley King is going to fit. Can you describe that a little bit more in detail? What that exactly is? Yeah, the Jack um, is an outside linebacker that is a primary rusher. And so I think um, his ability to situationally drop, I think make, makes the three, four, the three, four. So the idea of, of defensively um, the three, four lining up and the offense having to decipher or account for uh, fourth, the fourth rusher coming from uh, various positions. I think is what makes the defense. And so whether we're creating a four man rush with a nickel slash, um, you know, uh, outside linebacker with either of the inside linebackers becoming a fourth rusher or the Jack, which is the, um, a lot of times the weak side, sometimes the boundary outside linebacker, um, you know, makes the defense. And so are they going to slide the, the protection to the Jack? Now you can bring the, the the star or the nickel and get a one-on-one -on -one with the running back. Are they going to go big on big? Um, and the 5-0 line are going to block the five most dangerous, which would include the jack and may include the star. Now you can bring an inside linebacker and get a one-on-one -on, -one on the back. Those are just two examples. And the run game also is affected. Um, and so you want to be able to, to – uh, identify how they think, how they count, um, how they block. And then you want to send the person that, that can most disrupt kind of their way of thinking. And I think anytime that you can get that one-on-one matchup on your terms, uh, so a strength versus a weakness, 
and, and do it with a really elite player, then it's an advantage for us. And I think he gives us that. Appreciate your time. All right, we'll go to Jason King next. Hey, Dave, thanks for taking a few minutes. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Um, back to Kevin's question about the, the conditioning. Did, do you get a sense that most of these guys or most of your guys have access to, to weights and, and things like that, or is it mostly just – I feel a lot of them do. Outdoor running and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, sorry. Yeah, I feel like a lot of them do. In talking to them, I think they've got they've been getting access to. Um, sometimes it's it's a uh, it's a garage gym. Sometimes it's a it's a, uh, a weight set that's in you know a guest room. Um, sometimes it's been at a school, and so I think they've they've been able to get access to it all in various unique ways and so it hasn't been a standard um and the, and then um the conditioning part i know um has been talked about a lot on our calls about getting the run in in the morning and that and so i feel like the the majority of our guys are really working hard to um to, to put it all out there and uh and and try to follow the the program that we have, um, but you never know until we get them all back. Uh, just because we can't we can't really ask for results or ask for evidence of anything. So I think um, you know the leadership and the culture of the team is such that I think they they all want to move as one. And I and I think when we get them back, it'll be reflected that we did that during this time. Also, just to follow up on the installs that you talked about, when you're doing it online or in Zoom meetings, how does that really work in terms of, you know, you getting this sense that they're getting it? I mean, are you, are you giving them tests or, uh, or is it just something you're going to have to trust that they're, they're picking it up? I know you said they're kind of finishing your sentences at times. But. Yes. No, it's good. I think one of the things is we want to be able to try to minimize the groups so that you can see their faces. I think the whole thing with the Zooms is the, you know, what makes it different than a phone call is that you can see the face and you can see the interaction and you can, you can kind of measure, are they locked in, right? And so I say, if you have a big Zoom call, right, we have a Brady Bunch window that we're looking at right here, but say if there's guys that I'm not looking at here, they could very, very well be on a phone. They could, their head could be tilted watching Netflix or whatever it is. And so you want to be able to try to see that they're making eye contact, see that they're locked in. I think that's the first thing. And so try to have a group that's, that's, um, that is affordable, I guess, in terms of uh, the stuff that you're, um, you're giving them, they're, they're buying. And then two would be, you know, there, there, there is at the end of a lot of these meetings, there is the ability for quiz to, um, um, have them kind of put it in their own words. Hey, you turn around, teach me, uh, tell me about this, tell me about that. And so there, there are those things. Um, and so I think, you know, that uh, our, our ability to, um, to learn football, I've been impressed with and just the football IQ and the, um, the kind of the instinct for ball. And so um, it's been positive so far. Very last thing, we would heard some mixed reports on Tyquan Thornton uh, health-wise. If you guys were to start up in a few months, would he be ready to go? I just kind of heard, some, heard his knee might have been injured. I yeah, he's was, he's been making really good progress. Or just banged up or? Yeah, I would I would expect him to go when when we go. Thank you. Yes. All right, we'll go back to Werner and and we'll go try to get through a few of these really quick, guys. Dave, a little different topic. Uh, I was wondering what your opinion is of the uh, NCAA's proposal to allow players to use their likeness for endorsements, if you have an opinion on that. Yeah, I think, you know, we, I just was in on a meeting today with that, and I think, um, you know, we're all learning about that. I think there is a lot that is still has to, that still has to be worked out, you know, um, I know that I've got questions. Uh, our compliance group uh, led the Zoom meeting earlier today, and 
you know, they're on top of it. And I think, you know, prior to me uh, asking anything, they were already asking. It. And so I think, you know, a lot of it is kind of conceptual right now. Mm-hmm. And so the ability to, to move into the next phase of it um, with real pointed questions on ter- in terms of, uh, you know, there's some tentacles that go different, different varying ways. And so, you know, um, just getting a grasp of that, I think, is that next step. But I think that, uh, you know, anything that benefits the student athlete generally would be the thought. You know, just getting down the um, the foundational beliefs and limits of this, I think, is that next step. Obviously, working with Coach Roberts before, what does he bring to the table? And is there just kind of a unique uh, comfort level with you two guys having been there before? There is. I think um, Ron is very, he's very intelligent. He's very intense. He is a player's coach. I think he is very, um, he's very open to, um, to new ideas and not afraid to go there. I think he is constantly um, looking for better ways. And I think really that's probably one of his, one of his, his best strengths is you know consistently looking to improve and um you know the the self-evaluation that he does and um the uh, so you know the self-scout uh, as well as the you know who's doing well on third down who's doing well in red zone who's doing well on you know limiting yards gain on first down um he's looking at all of it and um it's been it's been fun to, to be with him again because I'm, I'm I'm in on those talks now and and um, I can see where things are going and I'm excited about the progress there. I think you know um, he is always and the stops that the stop that I've been with him and then the other times that I've I've been talking with him and I've known him, he's always utilized his people uh, to their strengths and always put them in the best position to succeed. And you know, I know he'll do that here. Thank you, Dave. Go to uh, Jack Allen next. Coach, I know you've talked about how you aren't able to um, to see the players work out and get an evaluation of on-field success. But in terms of what you've noticed off the field, whether it's football IQ or leadership, what players have really stood out in the last couple months? Well, I think the um, you look at Trail Bernard would be one. I think. Um, I think John Lovett would be another. Charlie Brewer, um, guys that are leading. Um, um, Blake Vettier would be another one. I think you're looking at. I think when you look at those guys, they are. Um, they're leading their groups. There's others. I think the, the consensus, of, of our team, are guys that 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 want to push, that want to lead, that. Um, want to take that next step that want to be better than they were you know last year and I think um, it is uh, it's inviting to a lot of the younger players and so it's I think when you're at that point when you're at that stage of being a team um, you're close and so I feel I feel like um, you know to get those guys all back on campus and to um, um, to take that next step together, and I'm confident that uh, we're all going to be moving in the right direction. A lot of it's been been based on them texting the group when we've been off, um, communicating, making calls to teammates, um, encouraging encouraging guys, and so um, I think we've gotten stronger, and a lot of credit goes to them. We got time for two more, so we'll go to uh, Stephen Hawkins, and then we'll finish with John Morris. Dave, we talked obviously about all the uncertainty of timing and stuff, and the time when you're trying to learn your players online as much as anything, and your staffs coming together. With all that, have you even had a chance to look at the teams you're going to be playing, your opponents? I mean, obviously the Big Twelve teams you're going to play every year, and your non-conference teams. Yes. Yeah. So generally, you know, the in a lot of ways, the the um, the timing is flipped. And so usually what would happen would be we'd have spring ball and right after spring ball, we'd be out spring recruiting. 
And during that first week out, there would be a group of um, analysts slash quality control and grad assistants that would stay here and do kind of a um, uh, uh, review or recap or self-scout of spring. Hey, this was good, this was bad. Uh, we could do this better. Uh, we could disguise this, we could block this and so on and so forth. And then after that week, then we would get into uh, breakdowns of opponents. And so we had something I think lined up where we had, you know, five days to break down Ole Miss and, uh, you know, five days to break down Kansas, so on and so forth. And then we would get to June um, prior to summer in July, and we would present those um, those breakdowns that we did. You know, and this is in a normal time. And so in, you know, during the time of camps in June, the analysts, quality controls, GAs are presenting, you know, hey, um, Ole Miss is great at this. Uh, this is their top playmakers. This is their coaches, where they're from. This is their first down plan. This is their third down plan, so on and so forth. And so uh, we are doing that, or we have been doing that once we left. And so once we, um, you know, when we broke um, to all go virtual, we start breaking those things down right then, you know. And so um, we're presenting, I think, like, just this past week, we were, we were presenting Ole Miss. And so we're, um, we're in that June time, so to speak, that we normally would be in a normal, normal year. Jamo, finish us up. All right, Coach, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Given the Thank information you. and all the input that you have available to you right now, what's in your mind, do you have a strong feeling of the most likely scenario we're going to see in the fall? Is it going to be a full schedule? Is it going to be schedule with half stadium full, uh, full stadiums? Just what you know right now, what's your sense about that? I think, I think most, most people – um, on the calls that I'm in are trying to get the full schedule. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, the ability to um, get all on the same page of what exactly that looks like in terms of starting time, uh, in terms of what the stadium is going to look like, um, in terms of um, what if one state is this, what if one state is that, in terms of um, what happens if, uh, you know, one com one team um, gets a rash of people sick, like all of those things are, are all being talked about, and you know it's 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 hard to um, navigate when there's so many things that are fluid. But um, I think the consensus is to try to keep things as as close to normal as possible, and I think you know I, that's kind of the starting point for most people. I think the further you go down the rabbit hole, um, there's other options that are there. Um, so I, you know, I feel that by um, certainly by the end of this month, um, by the middle of this month, I think a lot of that stuff will be will be better solidified and, and better laid out uh, for all of us to kind of comment on and move on. 